I dedicate this six-minute rabbi to my dear wife, my source of blessing, Mushki, who is celebrating her birthday this Wednesday, the 17th of Iyar. May she have a shnaz bracha v'atzlacha, a year of blessings and success in all areas of life. Many times when discussing education, I ask people if they can remember their best teacher. Usually the answer is yes. When then asked, what made that particular teacher their best, their favorite? I often hear it was the passion with which they taught or the positive excitement exuding from the teacher that made them stand out from the rest. This passion and excitement was felt from the moment the teacher walked in the classroom in their good morning or good afternoon. It was present in the extra props they'd bring into the classroom to explain an idea. It was sensed in their interactive style, trying to involve the entire classroom. They always had some extra jump in their step. Not every teacher is like this. Many come to work every day just to do their job and get paid. They educate by delivering the subject matter to the students before them. They are well versed in the subject and answer all questions posed to them. But their style is dry, it's monotone, it's lifeless. The opening words in this week's Torah portion, Emor Leviticus chapter 21, says the following. Vayomer Hashem al Moshe, Emor elakon im b'nei Aaron v'amarta lehem l'nefesh lo yitamo b'amov. And the Lord said to Moses, Say to the Kohanim, the sons of Aaron, and say to them, Let none of you defile himself for a dead person among his people. And the obvious question is, why does it say the word emor v'omarta twice, a double language? And Rashi shares the answer. And I quote, emor v'omarta say, and you shall say, this double expression comes to urge the adult kohanim to be responsible for the minors. They must not contaminate them. The Hebrew word used for urging or warning the adults to educate the children is lahazhir which can also mean to shine. And this word with a double meaning is intentionally used, for in here lies the secret to education for parents, teachers, and truthfully everyone. Knowing a subject well is great, but it doesn't necessarily translate to the next generation. Belief in God is great, but it doesn't necessarily translate to the next generation. Practice and observance of mitzvahs is great, but it doesn't necessarily translate to the next generation. So if it's not the knowledge, if it's not the belief, if it's not the observance, if it's not all three of them together, then what is it? What does effectively get a message across to someone else? How do we educate a future generation? The answer is with shining passion. The knowledge has to shine. The belief has to shine. The observance has to shine. If my Judaism is ever to go beyond just my own flesh, it has to be done with excitement. I have to be passionate about it. Complaining about a mitzvah, even if I end up doing the mitzvah, is good as far as receiving reward for getting the job done. Like the disinterested teacher who will collect a paycheck at the end of the week for they did do their job. But inevitably it's going to put an unpleasant taste in the mouth of my child, student, friend, or any random fellow observing. In life, most times, if one's parent is passionate about sports, the children pick it up too. If the parent is passionate about traveling, the children pick it up too. If the parent is passionate about studying, the children pick it up too. God tells Moses, when you speak to the adult priests about the laws of ritual defilement, make sure you urge them and warn them to take care of the next generation as well. Don't just give them the information which they will then pass on. Explain to them the necessity to use language that will inspire them, that will motivate them, that will enliven them. And that language is passion. When they see the idea shining forth from you, they will be drawn to it as well. They too will be inspired by it and observe it. So I ask you, do you have a particular mitzvah that resonates with you more than others? Do you have a mitzvah which shines forth from you more than others? In the language of the Talmud, tractate Shabbos, page 118b, the sage Rav Yosef asked his esteemed colleague, Rav Yosef, the son of Rabbah, Avuch b'mai zohir tfei. With which mitzvah did your father shine? In what area was your father most vigilant? And he responded, 
it was the mitzvah of tzitzis. Let's ask ourselves that same question. In what area of Judaism observance are we most vigilant? What permeates and radiates forth from me? Where do I excel? Let's be to others like the best teacher that we had. The issue arises if, for whatever reason, I myself am dispassionate in my observance and Jewish practices. How can I become more passionate? To where can I turn to inject more life and energy into my own Jewish life? This is a good time to address this. For this Thursday, we celebrate Lagba Omer. It's a celebration of the holy book of Kabbalah called the Zohar and its author, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. The purpose of this book and all of Lurianic Hasidic teachings, which elucidate it, is to cause us to shine. That's the name of the book, Zohar, to shine. When one feels disconnected from a particular Torah idea, message, theme, or mitzvah, it's high time to open the book of shining light to illuminate the concept for us. Hasidus peels back the layers and shows the essence of the idea or mitzvah. Automatically, this gives us a newfound energy when discussing or observing it. Let's remember, although the best teachers make it look easy, in truth, they must put in a lot of prep work and are exhausted at the end of the day. If we are to be a shining light, we too must put in some prep work. I wish you a good Shabbos and may we merit the coming of Mashiach with a new dimension of Hashem's light without delay.